Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be giving you some tips for the Nestle Y application. So first, what is Nestle Y? Or NSLIY? Or, and I don't know, I've just been saying Nestle Y this entire time. So Nestle Y, funded by the US Department of State, provides overseas critical language study opportunities to American youth through merit-based scholarships to spark a lifetime interest in critical foreign languages and cultures. And when they're saying merit-based scholarships, they mean full scholarships. Food, housing, classes, you name it, you won't need to spend a single penny. And studying abroad in high school, it's honestly such a life-changing experience. So if you have any doubts about applying to Nisli Y, just seriously, please do it. And I'm saying that from personal experience. I'm an alumnus of the VSI 2020 for the Korean program, and as well as the Seoul Summer Korean program from 2021, so from this year. So just about VSI, VSI stands for Virtual Summer Intensive, and it was created as an alternative to the in-person programs that they mostly do um, because of COVID. So you don't actually specifically apply to VSI, it just kind of happened because of COVID. But definitely, fingers crossed, please COVID, go away for 2022. So I just wanted to clarify that because technically you would not be able to do two Nestle Y programs but because of the virtual component being kind of separate from in-person, in theory, you could do a virtual Nisli Y program, a summer program, and an academic year program with Nisli Y, as long as you do it in that order. So now actually onto the application. So the application this year has actually kind of changed, uh, not too drastically. So if you go onto the Nisli Y website at this link, you'll see that the application is now combined with the applications for YES and FLEX, which are two other US Department of State funded programs. So be sure to check out those programs too if you're interested in taking a gap year. So all that kind of really means is that you're gonna have to pay extra attention to making sure that you're applying to Nisli Y if that's what the one you're going for. And also if you're trying to apply to multiple programs, which if you're looking for a study abroad experience is a really, really good idea, then at least everything's gonna be combined into one application this year. And now most of the parts of the application are pretty direct. So I'm just gonna go through some of the sections of the application that could be a little bit more confusing or things I overthought and panicked over the first few times that I applied. For section eight, personal information, international experience. Well, Nisi Y says that they prefer people who have no abroad experience before. There were plenty of people on program who had been abroad before to many different countries. So don't be afraid if you think you have a lot of international experience, that is not something that Nisi Y is going to be like, oh, you've traveled here before, like you can't go again. But on the flip side of that, of course, there are plenty of people who had never been abroad before. So if you haven't, don't also think that that's a disadvantage. In terms of listing my experience, I just did a format like this where I said China visiting family March 22nd to April 3rd 2018 one week and for the section right below that um, as far as I know it doesn't really matter if you have family living in your host country because there are a lot of heritage speakers who always end up going on this Y, and so their extended family usually lives in the host country and so I don't think they're not gonna send you to a certain country because you have family, but the actual reason as to why they ask for it, I'm honestly not sure. For section 10, personal information, internships, paid work, and jobs. Uh, don't feel like that you need to have something in those sections. When I applied my sophomore year, after being rejected freshman year. At that point, I had never had a job or anything and I still got accepted. And there are also plenty of other people on program who have never had that. Uh, so it's okay if you leave that entire section blank, like don't feel like you have to. Instead, that section might be a really good way for other people to showcase their commitment to something. For instance, if they have to work instead of like doing extracurriculars and clubs. For section 14, recommendation, request, recommendation. Be sure to ask way ahead of time, as much time as possible, especially their teachers, they're busy, things come up. The last thing you want to happen is you did all of your parts of your application and then your teacher forgets or is too busy and everything goes. We are going to try to avoid that as much as possible. The thing about this year is that Nisi Y opened up their application pretty late, so you better be asking right now. But as a rule of thumb, I'd say at least 
a month ahead of time if you can. There's some teachers out there who are willing to do like the two day before, but don't, okay, don't even think about that. When you're asking your teachers for recommendations, be really nice about it. If you want specific tips, there's even like email templates out there. If you look up like college teacher recommendation email, some of the lines of that, you can find a really great way to ask your teacher. Give your teacher a gift or something afterwards. I don't know, just be nice about it. They're helping you out. In terms of what teacher to ask, I have personally just asked my Spanish teacher to write my recommendation letter. And because I've applied multiple times now, I actually had her submit the exact same recommendation letter twice now, and I got in. So if any of you guys are alum of something, I'm pretty sure it's fine if you use the same recommendation letter. You don't have to go and harass another teacher to do it for you. If you are not in ninth grade, do not ask your middle school teacher if you can. I get it, COVID is wacky. You probably haven't seen any of these teachers in person. Just avoid it. In general, for high school, anything, you don't want to include middle school stuff. But don't feel like that you have to get a foreign language teacher. I think as long as you're able to show that you're a mature person, as long as you're able to show that you have passion for language and culture, no matter what facet that that comes in. So you can either show it really strongly through your essays, you can show it through your extracurriculars, you can show it through the recommendation letter. So if you haven't taken like a foreign language in school or you're not really close with your foreign language teacher, do not feel like that you have to. You just need to make sure that the teacher can talk about like your maturity, um, how you are as a student, what you're like in class, those types of aspects of you. As long as they're able to show a good side of that, um, you should be fine. So don't feel like you have to go find a foreign language teacher. For section 15, statement request, parent or legal guardian statement. Do not panic if your parents aren't fluent in English. As the NISUY application details, you can always ask someone else to translate for them. Or in general, don't quote me on this, um, I, in my personal opinion, I don't think that the parent statement has a huge weight in the application whatsoever because really like what parent would badmouth their kid? If anything, I think it's definitely a way to show that your parents support you on going abroad because studying abroad in high school alone in a foreign country is a really big thing that your parents kind of have to give you permission for it. And so having them write the statement and talk about how great you are, so maybe they'll actually trust you to be able to go by yourself. So if anything, it's more of like a reflection for your parents to think about this really big decision that you're about to make. And the statement doesn't have to be well-written essay or anything. Again, I don't think it really matters that much as long as it's something positive about you and it's written by your parents. Section 16 self-introduction to host family and instructors. I did not do this when I was applying to the application, but please write the letter like your host family and your instructors are actually gonna see it because there's a really likely chance that they will. I got to have the joy of my host family reading my host letter out loud and I was standing there awkwardly because my letter was basically an essay with like dear host family and sincerely at the bottom. It was not written like a letter whatsoever. And it was so awkward. So don't make that mistake. <laughs> There's not really any sort of specific way to write this entire essay. I personally, whenever I do these types of essays, I like answering the questions indirectly and turn it into a story. But I've seen other people's essays you've gotten in that they like literally just answered every single question. So it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you end up answering the questions in some way. For me, because I want it to be a little bit more indirect, I took each of the questions and had like a word or two or like a phrase that answered the question and that's what I wanted to integrate into my essay. So I made sure to include every single one of those words or answers into my essay. Or even if I didn't include the exact word, I made sure that I was talking about something that made that character trait evident. So like hardworking, that's a really generic one. But then you could talk about like juggling school and a job and extracurricular, something lines of that where it's kind of really, really obvious that you have that character trait. But just overall, no matter what format you use, like everyone says this, but seriously, show, don't tell. Well, okay, you can preface it by telling, like, I'm responsible, but then you better have something to back it up. Because otherwise, every single person around here can just say, like, 
every single thing that they're trying to look for and be like, yeah, that's, that's who I end up. Just, just, just kind of prove it. And also I feel like it humanizes the essay a little bit more. Keep in mind that Nisley Y is reading through all of these different essays. There's so many of them. You want to be that application to stand out. And if your essays just kind of sound like, I like languages, I should go study abroad. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot harder to stand out like that. Again, if you're not a great essay writer, like don't feel pressure. Just so make sure that your personality shines through and you're kind of telling the story about who you are. And keep in mind that according to the Nisley Y website, they're looking for applicants' motivation for language learning and demonstrated cultural awareness, maturity and readiness for a challenging academic and international experience. Trust me, it's challenging. <laughs> so after you finish introducing yourself, talking about all the things that you like to do that you want to tell your host family, make sure that those character traits really, really shine through in your essays because that is what Nissi Y said that they're looking for. And now for the other essay section, section 17, essays. For essays one and two, they're a little bit shorter than the host family letter. So these essays are a maximum of 300 words. And honestly, they're just a way to show your maturity and readiness for the experience. So which is why they ask for like scenarios, things that you've done in the past that show that you're able to handle some sort of either like emotional challenge or intellectual challenge. Now these topics can literally be about any everyday situation, but if you do have international experience and you have a good story out of it, I would highly recommend that you use it because I feel like it's an easier and more direct way to show that you're ready for the challenges of a study abroad experience. So for instance, I wrote one of my essays about traveling to Europe with my family. And then I did another one about interacting with an exchange student. So it felt really natural to be able to interweave the cultural understanding part. But again, I've seen people's essays where they literally just write about talking about a friend. So you really, really don't need those international experiences as long as you can show that you are mature. Then for essay three, when they ask for three distinct reasons as to why you want to do Nisley Y, give them three distinct reasons. I've literally did separate paragraphs for each one. One of the big things that should be one of your reasons is how you want to use the language in the future. That does not mean that you have to want to become a diplomat, even though there's tons of people who really want to because it's just a natural correlation. If you want to be a diplomat, they're usually interested in foreign languages and study abroad. So it, it kind of just falls into place. But there's other people who like study like marketing or like um, be, want to become doctors. If you really think about it, language is a crucial part of anyone's life. So if you're a doctor, you want to be able to communicate with patients. If you're in marketing, you want to be able to expand to a global audience, those types of things. As long as you can articulate that, that will help your application become a lot more stronger. But of course, they see why I get it. We're high school students. They're not gonna like come and find you later and be like, you said that you want to become a diplomat when you were in ninth grade. <laughs> like, like they, people change. But figure out what your current goals are and how Nisley Y will help you reach those goals. For another one of the three reasons, I personally also tied in why I wanted to study Korean, my target language, so that's also a valid way to do it. <laughs> For Korean specifically, I did just want to bring up that there's nothing wrong with wanting to study Korean because of the pop culture. It's okay if you admit that. I actually talked about that in my interview when we went on to that next stage, which I will create a video about later. The part that Nisui Y cares more about is why I want to continue studying the language. So it's not about why you started, it's the why should we invest in you to continue learning the language and what do you plan on doing with it in the future. Now the last section I'm going to talk about is section 20. Nisui Y language experience, self-assessment of language preferences. Just be honest. This section does not affect whatsoever whether or not you get the Nisley Y scholarship because again they take everyone from any language ability and they just take this to figure out what classes you should be in um, or as well as like what location you'll end up in. 
because for some of the programs, certain locations only offer certain levels. So for instance, for Korea, the Jeonju program only does beginner and intermediate. So let's say that you were like downplaying your abilities for some reason. And so you show up in Jeonju and you're like, wait, they don't even have a class that's for my level. So just be straight up honest about it because it's not going to affect you whatsoever. One key question that I wanted to point out is 1D, which says, do you anticipate that you'll participate in formal or significant self-study of insert target language between now and the anticipated program start. If you don't think you're going to have time or you're not planning on taking a class, it does not hurt to say no. Again, this does not affect whether or not you get the Nisui Y scholarship at all. The this change actually just happened last year because I think this might have happened with a lot of people, but I know I specifically mentioned it to Nisui Y because when I originally applied, I was basically like a beginner except then I studied a lot. I had a lot of free time on my hands. And so I showed up into the program after I was accepted. This was for the VSI one in 2020. And let's just say I was no longer a beginner, except I got put in the program location that was basically only for beginners. So there was no other classes that I could take. And so that did not work out well. So I'm pretty sure that that happened to a few other people and that's why Nisui I decided to add that question. So it seriously doesn't hurt again, to be honest. It's just so that everyone can get the right program experience for them. Just some overall tips now. Number one, do not procrastinate. I know it's a really, really hard thing guys, but this is a really hefty application. It's basically a college application, which also suck. Still working on those and procrastinating on it. Don't, don't feel like me. For me personally, I always submit the day before because trying to do like the 4 p.m. EST and it's 3.59 and you're trying to like last minute copy and paste your essay, no, just Avoid that, turn it in the day before, and you'll be able to laugh at everyone else who's procrastinating. <laughs> no, don't do that part either. <laughs> Tip number two, emphasize your maturity through past experiences and your passion for language learning, which you can do through your reasons. Based upon what I've read on their website about their selection process, which you can check out on their website, they have a whole entire thing about it. That's kind of the big things that they're looking for, maturity and passion for language learning. That should be the end goal of your entire application put together. Your essays, your activities, your recommendation letters. So don't be scared if like one part of it just doesn't like show your language learning as much. So like as I was talking about earlier, the recommendation letter, if you don't have a foreign language teacher, it doesn't matter, you can show it in the other two sections. So as long as in the end you show those two big character traits, you should be really good. Oh, and also flexibility. So flexibility, maturity, and passion for language learning. Tip number three, don't overthink it. Don't overthink your past experiences or your language level. Focus on why you're the best candidate, why you're gonna be the one who's gonna take this opportunity and do great things in the world with it. There are plenty of people from both ends of having like no international experience and no language experience to like basically fluent and has traveled there multiple times is everyone in the spectrum who has gone so don't think that oh wait i have like a little bit more experience in this other part doesn't matter just be the best candidate show that you're ready for this and that you really really want it and number four don't be afraid of failure i know getting rejected sucks it really does been there done that multiple times well once with nisu why but other things that's the way life works guys. Nisley Y is a really competitive scholarship with about a 20% acceptance rate. So that means out of every five people, there's four people who are getting rejected. And that doesn't mean that those four people aren't qualified at all. It's just there's so many really great people out there. There's only so many spots. And so it might just be the tiniest tiny little thing that might push someone like that happens to be in the list above you so they get in so just don't be afraid of applying again there's a lot of people on program who i know how to apply their second or their third time it's really worth going through the entire application again like trust me on that so that's the end of the video i really hope that i helped you guys i personally was really genuinely terrified when i applied my first time so guys just don't worry, don't overthink. I know that's really hard, but Nisui really tries to make this as direct as possible. Just 
be honest and be yourself. If you guys are curious on what it's actually like to be abroad on the Nisley Y scholarship, be sure to check out the other videos on this channel where I document my daily life in Seoul, South Korea this summer. And feel free to leave any questions down that you have in the comment box. Bye!